Hi everybody, I'm Micah from ebikeschool.com and welcome back to part two of a five-part series on how to build an electric bicycle battery. In this part, we're going to be welding our battery, but before we can start welding, we need to check all of our cells to make sure that they all have the same identical voltage. Basically, you want to make sure that they're all within about a hundredth or so of a volt from each other. Now, I've never actually found a cell that comes straight from the manufacturer to have a different voltage than any other cell, because I just buy you know, good, genuine cells. But if you ever did find a cell that had a different voltage, that's likely an indication that it's got a problem in it somehow, it's got a different internal resistance, and it's slightly self-discharging. So if you find a cell that has a lower voltage, you want to just take that one out. Alright, so now that I know that all of my cells are the exact same voltage, I can move on to welding my battery. But before I start welding, I'm going to make sure that I've got my safety glasses and my gloves. Now when you're welding your battery, you want to make sure you're using good, high quality, 100% pure nickel strips. I got this, uh, this one kilogram roll of uh, this is 0.15 millimeter thick, 8 millimeter wide nickel strip a while ago. It's been lasting me a long time. This is really good stuff. You want to make sure it's pure nickel, because that's going to give you the lowest resistance. If you're not sure and you, you want to check if you've gotten uh, nickel plated steel or pure nickel, what you can do is you can take a little bit of your nickel strip and just scratch some of the surface with you know, a nail or, or any piece of metal, a coin. Just make sure you scratch the surface really well and then put it in some salt water overnight and see if it starts to rust. Another test I developed is that you can take a Dremel sanding wheel and just really like grind on this stuff and if you see it throwing sparks, you know you've got steel in there. So you've got nickel plated steel, which is not as good. You want to make sure you use pure nickel strip. Now I just cut this stuff with um, you know, normal uh, hobby scissors and uh, I cut it to whatever length that I need. I measure it out to make sure it's the length of um, whatever number of cells I'm working with. And then uh, I just use one as a template to cut the rest of them. All right, now one last thing before we start welding. I just want to show you here on these uh, parallel groups that I've already welded up from a previous project, these green insulating gaskets here. This is just a piece of sticker paper. This is an insulating paper gasket. And the reason that I have this here is it's extra protection against a short circuit. Now why would you need this? Let me show you on the uh, generic cell that I had out in the last video. Here I've gone ahead and I've cut off the heat shrink from the positive end. And if you take a look here, what you'll see is that the negative end of this cell actually continues all the way around. And this is negative, and this edge of the can here is also negative. So if I were to bridge this gap here, I would actually create a short circuit. And I'll show you what happens there with just a very small piece of wire. Here I've got a piece of wire here and I'll use just one strand if you can see that. I'm going to make a short circuit here. Do not try this at home. I'll make a short circuit. You can see how instantly this basically works as a fuse and it just melted this piece of wire and just cut it off right there. So you can see how important it is to make sure you don't bridge this gap. Now this used to be more important using these, um, these paper gaskets before cells started to get better. Now if you look Sanyo GA cells, they come with this blue insulating gasket underneath. I've got a few other cells here. Let's see, here's the uh, Samsung 26F. It also has this insulating gasket. Here's a Panasonic cell. It also has an insulating gasket there. These are white, the Sanyo one is blue. And actually, if you look at this uh, crappy generic cell, it also had this gasket here, where um, this was down under the heat shrink before I pulled it off. Well, harder to put together when you're not a professional battery assembler. And this works the same way. It's another gasket that goes underneath the heat shrink. So you can use these insulating gaskets here. Um, on better cells like these, this is basically just a third level of protection in addition to the heat shrink and the included gasket. But you know, something like this, triple redundancy is probably a good idea. So um, you can use these insulating gaskets as well. You don't always need to on these better cells, but it's a good idea. I just ran out of them, so I'm not using them on this build, but uh, consider them for your build. Now I'm going to use this cool little jig that came with my welder. Uh, it's just this magnetic holder, it can hold up to six cells. I'm going to use it to hold four cells at a time, and I'm going to weld up my, um, my four parallel cell sets first. So I'm going to end up with ten sets of four, uh, four cells in parallel. So let's weld those up now. Now you, you really want to use a spot welder when you're building a battery with 18650 cells. Don't let people tell you that you can solder these cells. Yeah, you can physically solder them, but um, you're just going to end up ruining the cells when you heat them up. So make sure you get a spot welder and do it right. Now the way I'm going to do this is I've got my four cells already in my holder here. They're all lined up so it's going to be a parallel weld. 
I'm gonna take my nickel strip and just slide it into the holder here. And I'm gonna put one weld on each cell, just in the beginning, just to sort of tack it on here. And now I've got one weld holding each of these cells here. You can see these nice clean welds. Next, I'm gonna roll this over and I'm going to do the negative side. Now the uh, negative end of these cells is always easier. You got this nice big target here. So again, I'm gonna slide my nickel strip into the jig. Sometimes easier than others. All right, and now I'm just gonna put again one weld on each cell to tack it on there. All right, now I can take it out of the jig. Now I've got this nice set of cells here, all welded up, but I only have one set of welds on each cell. I like to use two or three, so there's more, uh, I guess like a bigger path for the current to, to travel through. I'm gonna go back and do a couple welds on each cell here. Here we go, so now I've got three sets of welds on each end of each cell. And this is my first parallel group. Now I just have to make nine more like this. So now I've got all of my parallel groups welded up, and now I can start welding them in series. Now how am I going to do that? I'll start with my first two parallel groups. You can see I've got the positive ends here, that's the blue ends of the cells on these Samuel cells. I'm going to take one of these sets of parallel groups, I'm just going to flip it upside down. And now I've got a positive terminal next to a negative terminal. And I can just hot glue this like this, I can go ahead and weld the positive to negative and do those series connections. Now I'm going to use hot glue. I always use hot glue. Some people like to use those uh, snap together black plastic uh, Lego style cell holders. Those are perfectly fine. You can use those. Um, they, they end up making your battery a bit bigger, which I don't really like. Um, it means you don't have to use hot glue and you can also, uh, if you want to disassemble the battery later, it makes it a little bit easier. You still have to pry off the, the welds, but you can sort of you know, disconnect the cells afterwards. Some people say it helps with um, uh, cooling of the battery because it allows air between the cells. It doesn't really do that. Um, in practice, any battery is going to be sealed, whether it's in heat shrink or inside of a case. And then what happens is that same air is in there and it heats up. So it might make a small cooling difference in the first two or three minutes of operation. But after that, you've just got hot air stuck between cells. So you've just got an oven. At that point, you've got a convection oven instead of cooking by conduction. So it doesn't really matter in terms of cooling. Um, you know, more than just after the first couple of minutes when you've got a little air between the cells. But um, for me, I just personally like the hot glue. It makes it so I can build a smaller battery. All right, let's get welding these cells in series now. Now there's nothing real fancy here with the hot gluing. Basically, you just want to lay down a liberal amount of glue. Uh, make sure you line up the cells really well when you place them down. And then just hold them for a few seconds to make sure you get a nice solid bond here. And that's pretty much it. All right, now I'm gonna make this first set of series connections here on just one side of the, uh, the set of batteries here. I'm not gonna do the other side. So I'm gonna start by laying out my first connection here. I'm just making these welds. And I'm just gonna weld between each set of cells here on one side of this battery. Now what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to turn this over and weld on the other side because then I'd complete the circuit and I'd short this entire battery and I'd have a very hot battery on my hands. Sparks, potentially fire, not good. So I'm going to leave this side unconnected. I'm going to put my next battery uh, on this side here. So this is going to be the negative of my entire battery pack. This is the first set of cells. This is the basically negative one of the pack. This is going to be positive two, the positive end of the second set of cells. Then I'm going to take my next set of cells and put them right here. So this is going to be negative three. So let's go ahead and do that. All 
All right, so now I've got three sets of parallel cells here. The first two sets I welded in series, as you can see here. Now when I flip this battery over, I'm not going to weld between these two sets. That would create a short circuit if I weld between here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to weld between these two sets of parallel cells and I'll make this series connection. So let's go ahead and do that. Turn this battery around and always just double check. So I see that I've got my welds here. So my next welds are going to go on the other side here. So let's make those welds now. Alright, so now I've got three parallel sets here with series cells in between, sorry, series welds in between each set of parallel groups. Now I'm just going to continue this process for all ten series, uh, series welds. welded up our battery. That's pretty much all there is to it. There's one other thing to note though. Uh, each of these nickel strips can comfortably carry about 5 amps. Um, it can carry, while getting a little warm, up to about 7 amps. So I'm going to be using this on a bike that has a 15 amp controller. So I've got four strips between each battery. 4 times 5 amps is 20 amps. So 20 amps can comfortably travel through these series connections, which is more than the 15 amps of my controller. So this is fine. But if I was going to be using, say, a 30 amp controller, then suddenly I would need to double up these series connections here. So instead of just using one uh, nickel strip here four times, I might use two nickel strips, one on top of each other. That would give me eight nickel strips and would just uh, make it so my battery heats up less and wastes less energy. All right, so thank you for watching part two of this series. Join us again for part three, which is going to talk about how to choose a BMS, and then I'll show you how to wire it onto a battery. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.